Hi, this is John from Racimoto, and I want to give you a detailed overview of the Ultra B. So I've had the uh, privilege of riding the only one in our country at the National Hard Enduro Titles to test this out, to absolutely torture test it. So I've got a little bit of experience on it now and I've got the feel for it and I want to walk you over all the little details. So first, let's start at the top. As far as the brakes go, the brakes are more motorcycle grade and they are adjustable that you can adjust the lever in or out, which is quite good. The handlebars are a motorcycle grey with a taper. I think that's a 28mm bar. Uh, there's no dampening in it, which is a little bit of a shame. It's Most of the bikes have a, a rubber dampener in there, but this one doesn't seem to. It seems to be more sol solidly mounted. As far as the controls go, this is the enduro version. So you have all your blinkers and light switches, etc. But one thing that you have to do when you start the bike, there's a ready switch over here, which you have to press on and hold to get the bike to run. So once you turn your key on, we'll turn the key on, you'll see the ready lamp come up here. What you have to do is hold it on until the green light comes on. And that means it's ready to go. And this is your kill switch. Turn your bike off, turn it on. Then you've got three uh, speed modes. You've got eco which will come up here on the dash as an E, over here. And then you've got dynamic mode, which comes on here. And then you've got sport mode. Sport mode being the fastest, eco the slowest, and dynamic is in between. So I've been riding it mostly on sport mode, which is quite good. So uh, as far as the suspension goes, the suspension is more motorcycle grade, around 240 mil travel and the brakes are more motorcycle grade as well compared to say the Suron X. So I found the suspension very good off-road, uh, no issues, probably just needed more time to dial in compression and rebound, um, but a big improvement over the Suron X. So the motor, the motor is very similar to the Suron X you think, but it is wider. If you look underneath, underneath there you'll see how wide the stator is. It's quite wide in there, and that's where they would get their extra torque. But you will notice the fins are very exposed, so I'm a bit worried about hitting a sharp rock in the center there. The bash plate on the front is quite robust. It takes a lot of hits. It's a nylon, very much like the nylon we use on our uh, race spec products, on our pro bash plates. So that was able to take a lot of big hits. Uh, controller, I had no overheating problems with the controller. Uh, very, very steep hills, long duration, hot weather, uh, no overheating problems, no, no fold backs happening. So that was quite impressive. Uh, steering damp, uh, steering uh, turning circle was a, a little bit less than I would have liked just because of these bump stops here. But I thought it was going to be bad, but I didn't really notice it too much. We just like a little bit more turning circle. It's something you could adjust. There's a bit of room there for a bit more turning circle. Uh, as far as you've got a USB thing there, which I don't normally use, but potentially you could plug in a GoPro or something, or a 360 cam, Instacam. Um, as far as the battery goes, so it's a four kilowatt hour battery, 74 volt. It is quite tricky to get in and out. It's not, not as easy as I'd like. Uh, it has, you have to take the seat off and the key is around here that you flick and you've got to be quite aggressive to get it off. Seat's quite well made. It has these two latches you have to undo and sort of fiddle with to get the lid open. And there's your battery, little gas strut and you're able to lift out the battery. What's tricky is trying to close it again. So there's a instruction here, you've got to somehow flick the center ones to get it under and then catch it. There we go, we've got it on. So there's just a technique there. Bit of storage space in here. So you can put some water, your wallet, I don't know about your phone, you probably smash it, but you know, you put some tools in there. It has a little toolkit, cute little toolkit. Got some basic tools. Nice little tools, not everything you need. Nothing to do the chain or 
um, chain tensioning or take the wheel axle out, but some just some little baby tools for adjusting. So that's quite neat. I like that. Uh, hand guards were reasonable. I'd probably put better hand guards. These, um, I've actually broken them. We had quite a few crashes on the poor little thing. But overall, it's very robust. It's, it's stood up very well. Uh, the suspension has uh, your adjustments up the top. So you've got rebound adjustment on the top of both fork legs. And then you've got compression adjustment on the lower of the fork leg as well. Down here, you can adjust your, um, uh, your, your compression. So that's quite neat. On the rear shock, if you come around here, you've got your compression dial on the top here, so you can adjust your compression, and you've got your rebound on the bottom, and then you can adjust your spring. So overall, the suspension is, is quite decent. Really was quite good. Uh, the chain, the chain is a 520 grade, so that's more robust than your, uh, your 420 on your Suron X. Uh, I do need to adjust this, it's stretched a bit, but it's quite a, quite a strong chain. Rear sprocket, 56 tooth. Combination's good, torque is good, top speed. Uh, flat out, I got to 92 kilometers an hour, which is uh, pretty decent. Plenty enough for off-road. Foot pegs, foot pegs I have no issue with. They were quite good. They're not super spiky, but they really gripped well. I, I don't think you really need to change those. Uh, handlebar grips up here, stock Surons, no issues with them, they were quite good. Um, let's talk about performance. So performance, this bike motors along on hills very, very well. So on a normal Suron, if you get stuck, it's very notchy and very hard to get started, especially if it's extremely steep. This was able just to inch away and pull away very nicely. And that's a real bonus on the off-roads. I basically, even if I got stuck, I could manage it on the worst terrain possible. So that's hats off to that. Range, range under hard enduro conditions, we killed the battery basically, um, 20 kilometers, like 14 miles, but that's not normal riding. Trail riding, you're going to get some decent amount, but you know, on, under what we've been doing, it's been extreme wheels probably the wheels are the biggest problem so the stock wheels are 19 inch front and rear 1.6 inch on the back 1.4 inch on the front they need to change there's not enough tire options for the 19 inch and we had to throw a knobby on and then it's out of balance the front's too small so really have to get yourself a set of 18 21s and some decent tires, and that would change the dynamics of this bike. Uh, what else can I tell you about the bike? Um, it's very similar to the Suron X in many ways with the, uh, the belt drive mounted over the swing arm, which is great to keep your chain adjusted. I haven't had any issues with the belt so far. I've loaded it up as hard as you could. It's obviously a, a far beefier arrangement. As I said, temperature is fine and didn't overheat. I rode it in sport mode mostly. Uh, it got absolutely punished. We loosened a few things. We loosened this um, little mount here, which is your kickstand sensor. That came off. We did have a problem with the switch, which is the get ready switch up top. It stopped and I, for an hour, we were on the, on the track stuck because this switch wouldn't come back on and it wouldn't allow the bike to go. So we had to diagnose it and we found out it's just a faulty switch. So that's a bit of a pain, but that's, that's nothing, you know, that's not gonna happen on all bikes. So overall, this bike, you know, at 85 kilo, it's lighter, it's more nimble. It's not as quick as my performance Suron X, which is lighter and similar power, but it's far more stable, far more manageable on steep hills. Overall, it's a winner. I really like it. I can't wait to get it set up properly with the 1821s, everything on it. One thing I'll say, I personally would like more regen braking. Uh, I've tested it and when you back off, there's very minimal to nothing on regen braking. So you do have to be on the brakes a lot more. 
um, which does give you a bit more forearm pump and cramp. So I prefer to have uh, more regen so you can dial hard into a corner, back off and it basically pulls you up and then accelerate through. Whereas this, you've got to dive on the brakes and accelerate. So it's more like a traditional motorbike. You know, take advantage of regen, I say. So overall, look, a really top bike at the price point. It's fantastic. Can't wait to get them out there. They're definitely going to open up a lot more places to ride. It's not going to suit your urban Suron X riders. You know, this is more of a motorcycle that you can take where um, normal motorcycles won't be allowed to go. So that's the winner aspect of this. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, really like to help you out. I've had a bit of time on this bike to understand it. And uh, I think it's got very positive aspects. I think it needs a little bit of tweaking, but on, in saying that, it's going to be a really good bike for the price. And again, it's quiet so you can ride more places and that is the biggest thing.